time you reese get more snaps with one this week the significance of dane being out there running the number two unit uh no they we balanced them off pretty good um and i think i mentioned this they've got to get equal uh snaps with the first uh, and second unit so today was really the end of that breaking of, of reps with with tommy and dane so we'll We'll, uh, we'll meet this weekend, and, and uh, I think we get together Tuesday, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So we'll make an announcement Tuesday on who the quarterback is at the press conference. Any separation between Everett and Andrew, or are they neck and neck with where they are? You know, they both have flashes. You know, Everett had a couple flashes today, but also, you know, when he has a chance to, you know, level to a ball back into the end zone, he, he throws a line drive and gets it picked off, you know. So it's – there's great things from both those kids. They're, they're just – you know, we can't put them in there yet because they're, they're not able to take great care of the football. But they, they I think you guys know, I mean, you, you haven't seen them very much, obviously, so you have to rely on, on me. But both those kids have got huge upside. They're just not ready to do it on a consistent basis. What does that say about Everett that he's going to catch up so quickly? Sorry. Catch up so quick? Why, did you think in he was that far behind? No, no, I mean, in terms of he's, this is his oh, first season and he's right Yeah, but he had, the, he had the spring. You know, really. So he came in with Andrew. Andrew really didn't do much in the playbook during the fall. So I, I don't know that I'd characterize it as much as um, he just, you have to set the offense for him. You know, you saw what we did. We threw it deep and, you know, we hit some play action and moved to the pocket a little bit. So you just really have to set your offense to what he's capable of doing. And I think you just saw a couple of glimpses of that today. How did you schedule your practices this week to, to maximize your ability to learn about Reese and kind of how far he's come? What were some of the things you wanted to see from him this week? Well, we had multiple situations, multiple situations, not just two minute, but uh, fourth down and goal. Uh, from the eight yard line uh, with eight seconds on the clock. Um, plus 35 with a minute and five with one timeout. We wanted to see everything from grounding the ball in a clock clock situation to throwing it away and not taking a sack and knowing that you've got another down. We really had to rehearse most of those game situations because both of them are so statistically even. I mean, the, we were doing a production chart last night for both quarterbacks and the deeper we dug <laughs> on numbers, the cloudier it became. <laughs> it was the exact opposite. You know, I've been doing it a long time, and sometimes it's easy. You just look at the numbers, and they tell you who the number one and two quarterback are. We're going to get into subjective things um, now as we move forward because the numbers are so equal. They do things um, so well, um, and now we'll have to get to subjective. Uh, what would some of those subjective things be? I, I think you can, you know, there, there's a lot of different things that, you know, for me that, that I know about those guys that, allows me to make that decision. I, I really would not publicly comment on them because I think it goes to maybe some of their strengths and weaknesses as well. And I wouldn't want to you know, get into those things. So I think it's more subjective right now. Both of them have done very, very well. We're, we're lucky. I mean, it, call it whatever you want. I got two really good quarterbacks that are ready to play championship football. So is part of that on feel that you just, you know this is going to be the guy? When no, you talk about I, subjective. I've been well subjective. There's there's so many things that are subjective, right? You know, um, and and I think it doesn't have to do with numbers. Uh -huh. You know, and and those are the things that we may have to impart for us to make a the decision on who that quarterback is. Brian, what has uh, Stefan Tuitt showed you since he's been on campus here with you? As a football player, mm -hmm. or as a young man, both. Um, as a young man, that uh, he's very capable of being. Uh, a strong student. Um, he, he's, he's gained confidence in the classroom this summer, and, and I think that was huge for him, you know, coming uh, from a, a high school that doesn't normally predict to Notre Dame. Uh, he's done very well there, uh, which gave him a lot of confidence to go play football. And now it's taking a raw player. I think we all know he's fairly raw. I think a lot of you guys here evaluate him as such, and, and getting him to develop into um, a guy that is disciplined. And he's made that progress. Um, we'll get him ready. How he's far away are your two running backs, uh, your two freshman running backs right now from being able to contribute? I, I think they both can contribute. I think, did you get a chance to see both of them today? Uh, you know, George is going to be a really good player for you. He's 6'2", 205 right now. He's going to get physically stronger when he knows what he's doing. And Cam is physically fit enough to play right now. So both of them will have to have Al, some, some role. I hope it's limited. 
uh, but they'll have to have some role. And they'll both play because they're all on our, they're on our ST. They're on special teams, so they're going to be playing this year. Brian, piggyback, kind of piggybacking off Eric, having Lynch and Tuit both out there with the second offense, does that speak to how far they've come just in terms of your ability to rely on them? Well, to get there, they had to do some work as well. You know, we have other players there, Brandon Newman, Hafiz, um, Tyler Stockton, Kona Schwenke. So, you know, they've made progress, you know, since they've been here to, to, to get into taking second team reps. Now what their job and role is, is to, to fill in when we needed so we can keep Ethan and, and Cap fresh for, for four quarters. So you guys are starting to have that confidence in them that they are they're ready, they're, they'd be ready to go. Oh yeah, we're much more confident than obviously the first day, and we'll need more time. They're not, you know, Aaron will jump out of his gap once in a while, mm -hmm. but Ethan did last year, you know. So we're, we're keeping it in perspective, but they're making the right kind of progress and, for us. And where has Lynch made the most strides since the discipline, spring? Discipline, discipline, and and maintaining his emotions. You know, you, you got to understand. I guys, you guys know this. Every single day, those guys got to come to work. Uh, and at 18 years old, <laughs> they're not used to that. They're not ready for a full-time job. Yet. No, they're not. They're not. But they're getting there. They're 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 not there yet, but they are making pro and they know how to get there. They just they're 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 making good progress. Brian, do you feel like you have to tamp down the expectations either for their sake or for fans' sake, so that so that things all I listen. They're not starting for us. Mm -hmm. They're going to play a role. You'll get a chance to talk to them. I've I've. Um, I've made sure that our players all know that, that they have a role and they're going to have to accept what that role is. And I'm pretty confident that our freshmen know what their role is, and that is to assist our veteran players. What's Koyak's role at this point? He's a guy that... Uh, emerging <coughs> yeah. would be the word I would use more than anything else, emerging. Um, he'll play this year. And how about Springman and his competition with Hafiz? And Hafiz has been holding him off. Um, been very spirited there, um, but Hafiz has done a nice job. You know, uh, Hafiz needed a, you know, he needed to come to work every day too. Um, and Tony's <laughs> been that guy to get him to work every day. So he's he's right now holding that that battle off, but that that's going to continue to unfold throughout the year. It's just so striking to see so many of the young, the size of so many of the young guys, just the stature, the older guys. We're bigger, are we're leaner, we're more athletic, uh, we're physically more fit. Um, we're where we should be in, in the second year. And Nicholas has continued to impress you? Yes, he's extremely athletic. He'll be uh, on all of our kick teams. He'll play this year. All these guys that have to get ready this year. I think we wouldn't get the kind of play that we got out of Bennett Jackson, for example, a corner, unless he had all those snaps last year. Same thing with Low Wood. Both of those guys now are quality corners that can go in games. I don't know that they have been there if we didn't have them on the field. Sometimes last year. people think that that you, you quote waste a player on special teams, but they get pretty valuable experience just playing that. Well, know. I know our fans will be happy to know that Low Wood and Bennett Jackson can go in the game if we have an injury at corner. And that's the product of them playing. Now, I'm not going to run a guy down one time during the year, and that's our staff meeting. Our staff meeting is, listen, uh, are we ready to commit to this young man being on all these run teams? Then let's play him. If not, let's hold him back. And, you know, those are conversations that have already taken place. And what's the latest on return guys, punt return? Or when, when would you Theo Riddick, Theo Riddick, Theo Riddick, Theo Riddick. He's got to do it. Both. Anything. Wherever you kick the ball, he's got to be around it. Um, Kickoff returns, him and Bennett Jackson right now. Punts, it would be Theo. The and Will linebacker spot's one of the last kind yeah. of starting spots up for grabs. How's that going with Dan and Carla? Very good competition there. Uh, you know, Fox and, and Calabrese uh, are battling it out. Uh, you know, I, I'd say that uh, we'll probably have a decision on that pretty close to, to Monday, too. And Nusser Watt? Uh, that's what they asked me. Um, I would say right now that uh, we're probably not ready to decide on that. You know, um, we had some things today that we need to evaluate. Uh, but both those guys, I have a lot of trust and confidence that both of them can play. I'm not ready to say who that starter is going to be. Injury-wise, are you about where you were five days ago? Was well, I just the other I just heard this morning that that somebody tweeted that they had surgery, so I should probably announce that. Uh, um, that uh, Jake Golick uh, uh, broke his arm and, and had surgery this morning and 
he'll be lost for probably six weeks. Uh, yesterday in a uh, just a, a, a run fit drill, uh, broke his, uh, his, I think it was his ulna. Um, so he had a plate put in it. Um, we weren't going to say anything until we talked to his, his family, but he, he tweeted it, so. <laughs> standard, standard policy. That's my life. Out That's my life. <laughs> I, I go up, I'm going to read the tweets and find out what I don't know. Coach Martin talks about Slaughter and Mata as if, you know, it doesn't matter who starts, they're going to be fairly interchangeable. Can you not do the same thing with Fox and Calabrese, or because the position's different, does that have to, do you have to have a number one, per no. se? No, I think you're right. Uh, both those guys are going to play considerable football for us, so. Yeah, I really, when we get over the fact that one and two are so equal, like Nuss and Watt, um, they're both going to play a lot of football. I think the good news here is Chris Watt has improved immensely to put us in that situation, and obviously Fox has improved. You know, he wasn't ready to play last year. Now he is. Brian, when you were talking about the challenge of building offensive depth, does Deveris fit into that equation? in terms of a guy that's already on your roster that could could be part of that mix? He's he's a guy that unfortunately has to play. Mm -hmm. I, you know, he's not ready to play, um, but he has to play. You know our limitations. I spoke candidly that that's a weakness within our program, and that's why we have to recruit the receiver and running back position. But he's going to be forced into, you know, playing out there. And, and we'll probably have to be creative with – you know, other positions in terms of playing more than one position. You know, they're going to have to play X and Z and W, and I don't like to do that, but that's kind of where we are right now with that position. So I expect him to play this year. Switching gears a little bit, Coach, you and a lot of the other assistant coaches have talked about your leaders being a lot more vocal this year. In your past experience, is that generally a sign of the better team? <laughs> it means we're going to win them all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that? <laughs> Come on. Um, comfort level, when to speak up, when, you know, sometimes they don't know, and when, when you don't know their personalities, <coughs> and I mean the coaches, they don't know when to step up. Yesterday we were not as um, energetic on defense as we would have liked. Today, it was very vocal out there, you know, because they know. And, and so I think the comfort level gets more guys that have that vocal ability as a leader to step up, and we're seeing more of that this year. Some of your more successful teams, were they did they show that same... Uh, it, yeah, you have you have singularly some guys that know the spots that they got to step up and and uh, be heard, and and we've got enough of those guys now. One or two more. Ryan, you're in a little bit of a <laughs> I think a bunker probably, but I'm sure you've heard about the story at Miami. Yeah. Your, your initial reaction to that and kind of the lessons that you know you need to take away and make sure are applied here. Well, it's it's obviously not good for college football. It's it's. Um, you know, there's no good spin. You can't put a good spin on it. Uh, what I can tell you is, is that there's a lot of football coaches out there that uh, believe that um, recruiting uh, the right kids, and, and, and when I say the right kids, kids that understand and recognize the value of getting an education mm -hmm. uh, first uh, can alleviate maybe some of those things. And uh, that's not to uh, say that uh, the guys at Miami didn't want to go to school, uh, but they had other things in mind too. So I think as a coach, as a program, um, you recruit guys that understand that they're coming to a university to get a degree and the value of that degree and what it costs and, and um, playing football. The rest of that stuff, um, you know, we're going to have to be more vigilant, everybody. Everybody says, well, it's just the NCAA. I think that's uh, I think it's a cop-out. I think it's the NCAA. I think it's the institution. I think it's the coach. I think it's compliance. I think it's everybody that has got to really um, – and, and the penalties have to be severe for those that don't uh, choose to play by those rules. Yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.